Welcome to the Mayo Clinic Cardiovascular Continuing Medical Education Podcast. Join us each week to discuss the most pressing topics in cardiology and gain valuable insights that can be directly applied to your practice. Hello, I am Francisco Lopez Jimenez, cardiologist and professor of medicine at Mayo Clinic. Today, we will be discussing no harm in red meat after all. I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. Steve Kopeski, consultant and professor of medicine and expert in this area. Welcome, Dr. Kopeski. Thank you, Francisco. The U.S. has some of the highest red meat consumption per capita in any country of the world. The controversial 2019 Annals of Internal Medicine article encouraged red meat consumption and came to the conclusion that we do not need to cut down. Could you brief tell us the key points of this study? Yes, uh, that's a very interesting study in that it was a uh, systematic analysis and it was an analysis of systematic analyses. So it had multiple studies in it and the conclusions were we don't need to cut down on our red meat. Well, if you read the study, it actually showed that eating red meat increased cardiovascular events and increased cardiovascular death. That was their conclusions. But their overriding conclusion was that it wasn't a very big increase and people like to eat red meat, so we really shouldn't change our red meat eating habits. Now, that was very controversial. There were some issues about conflict of interest and, and other things that came out later. So it, but it did generate much interest and a lot of uh, lay press. Good. Uh, do you think uh, all red meat is the same in terms of health effects? Well, that's, uh, you know, that's a very important question. And uh, it is very clear that red meat can be divided into two groups, unprocessed and processed. So unprocessed is the, the whole meat, you know, the whole organ, the whole muscle. Process, though, includes a lot of other things. You know, we, we cl classically think of processed, in fact, the top five processed foods, uh, meats eaten in this country are lunch meat, sausage, hot dogs, ham, and bacon. Now, what's a processed meat? You know, if it's cured, if it's smoked, if it's fermented, if it has salt added and, uh, or chemical preservatives, it's a, it's a processed meat. And it's very clear that processed meat, uh, for every uh, 50 grams you eat, uh, which is about two bites, it increases your risk of uh, coronary heart disease by about 40% over a few years. And that's, you know, per daily intake. So the, if you look at the data, about two thirds of that increased risk seems to be related to the sodium in the processed meats because it's very heavily, uh, very heavily um, uh, added sodium to because it's a preservative. So what we end up doing is uh, have to divide them up uh, into processed and unprocessed. Now, the unprocessed meat is not as bad by any means in terms of, uh, of causing coronary heart disease, but it doesn't really mean we can eat it ad lib either. I mean, people think, well, it's okay, so I'll have a big 18-ounce steak, and it really should be you know, considerably uh, less red meat that we eat daily. Now, this paper showed results all over the place. I mean, it was not really a uh, unified result in all of these studies. So, so why is this so difficult to do a study on red meat intake and effects on health? Yeah, good question. It's, uh, you know, we are, what we standardly do in medicine is we like to do a randomized, placebo-controlled, double-blind trial. <laughs> you can't do that with red meat. You can't double-blind it, and you can't say, you, eat, you know, this group of patients, you eat red meat, this group of patients not eat red meat. Uh, because you would be including uh, vegans or vegetarians, and that would be a different, uh, whole different subset of people. So it's impossible uh, to do a randomized trial almost. Even the Mediterranean diet trial, the Predimed study, was basically a cohort that was followed. So we just can't really do a standard trial, and there's a lot of crossover. So a lot of people that are eating red meat a little bit will eat more. They'll have a family reunion or a Fourth of July picnic or something. And it's basically the studies that are done are done from recall. And they, they don't recall every day. They have a recall questionnaire every couple of years and say, how much red meat do you eat every day? Well, as, as humans, we tend to forget, you know, how much we actually eat and, uh, or misremember it. And uh, so it's very, very difficult to know the dose of the red meat that people eat. Plus, the final thing is, what's, what is, accompanies the red meat? 
you know, if you're eating uh, red meat with a lot of uh, fats on it, mayonnaise and, you know, processed foods and, and et, et cetera, it really uh, confounds things quite a bit. And it's just almost impossible to separate those things out. And perhaps also, you know, what the other question is what what the other people that are not meat eaters are eating, right? That might not be very healthy either. So if if they eat a lot of sugar or low fat things might might be also affecting the thing. No, thank you. So uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, so red meat has been linked to saturated fats because obviously red meat has a considerable amount of saturated fat. And this has been linked since the Seven Nation study published about 50 years ago. What uh, what have we learned uh, that is still true regarding saturated fat right now? Well, you know, the saturated fat story uh, from the Seven Nation study, it's very interesting. If you go back and look at, at these studies and their, you know, their minutes, their notes of their meetings and such that I've reviewed, in many of the uh, of the Mediterranean countries that were involved, you know, around the Mediterranean Ocean, uh, see, they um, they said uh, to the inv principal investigator, "Gee, um, you know, you're focusing a lot on red meat and uh, saturated fat, and maybe you know what we really do more here is we use more monounsaturated fat, like olive oil, for our primary source of." Uh, and the principal investigator, Ansel Keys, who was really, a, you know, a leader in this field, and many of the things he said are exactly correct. But he said, you know, I really think it's more red meat, and that's where the saturated fat came from. Well, subsequent studies have been done. One of our colleagues, uh, Bob Franz's father, was one of Ansel Keys' uh, investigators with him. And uh, some data has come out showing that um, it really wasn't that important to worry about uh, saturated fat, that instead, try to have more uh, olive oil in the diet and limit saturated fat to a certain degree. The other thing is, what do you eat instead of saturated fat? Uh, well, you tend to eat, at least uh, when those studies were done, a lot of carbohydrates and a lot of um, uh, trans fats, which have now been outlawed, and a lot of carbohydrates that, were, that contain uh, trans fats and uh, are highly processed. So it's, it's, again, it's very difficult to separate out individual macronutrients in a diet. And I think the best way to handle this is to help us all understand and our patients what to eat in terms of things they understand, like eat you know, uh, red meat or eat a blueberry or eat an apple or you know, things like that. Now, uh, go going back to the uh, red meat consumption, so based on the ANAL study, ANAL study that uh, show a modest but significant increase in risk uh, but only in the groups that had a very high uh, intake of, of, of red meat. W will it be safe to say that modest amounts of meat will not be necessarily harmful compared to being vegetarian? Well, any thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a good question, Francisco. You know, if you look at what our bodies have eaten for the past tens of thousands of years and millennia, We've had red meat, we've eaten red meat, but we didn't eat a lot every day. We couldn't go out and kill a deer for breakfast. We would uh, use meat at, for celebratory purposes, you know, a new a wedding or a new king or queen or a new birth or a uh, you know, celebration of some sort. So small amounts of red meat we've been using, we've been eating you know, forever. But again, emphasize the small amounts. If you look at some of the tribes in the world, like the Bolivian uh, jungle, Amazonian jungle, the Tsunami uh, Indians, they eat you know, a few ounces of red meat on average a day. And if you look at the uh, Predimed study, the Mediterranean diet study, they allowed up to three ounces of red meat a day. Now, I ask my patients to eat three ounces of red meat, and I show them it's a deck of cards, and they say, oh my God, I mean, that's like two bites, doctor. What, <laughs> what am I gonna do? And so we have to encourage our patients to, to slowly change their habits. And I do emphasize the slow, one bite at a time, because you cannot change quickly. But, uh, you know, take one bite, put it on the side, and fill something else in there that may be a little better or healthier for you. So the bottom line is um, processed meats are the ones to avoid. The whole meat is, is okay to have a little bit. But, um, you know, be careful because the, uh, you know, it's, it's small amounts and it gets away from us very quickly. And finally, the, even the whole red meat, while it doesn't seem to increase our risk much, although it does increase the risk for diabetes, it doesn't seem to lower our risk any at all, like some of the other things we eat, like fruits, vegetables, legumes, olive oil. 
Now, the Mediterranean diet has been shown to be beneficial for cardiovascular disease um, event reduction. Does this dietary pattern allow red meat? And if so, how much? Yeah, well, Mediterranean, they suggested this three ounces uh, of meat a day and um, not to go over that. It wasn't required, but don't go over it. And then really avoid the processed meats like we talked earlier. They're the ones that are full of sodium, raise our blood pressure, have a lot of chemical additives. And that's what we really have to be careful with. And the issue there, of course, is uh, when we're in times like now, with uh, the pandemic, we tend to eat a lot more pre-made foods, and that would include processed meats, luncheon meats, which is the number one uh, processed meat that we eat in this country. Good. Well, excellent. Thank you, Dr. Kopeski. Uh, those were very important uh, points. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Feel free to share your thoughts and suggestions about the podcast by emailing cvselfstudy at mayo.edu. Be sure to subscribe to the Mayo Clinic Cardiovascular CME podcast on your favorite platform and tune in each week to explore today's most pressing cardiology topics with your colleagues at Mayo Clinic.